uh, an unprecedented situation, right, where you have a ship and a, of, of a cargo mass that large moving at that speed, it's difficult to understand what infrastructure could have taken that level of that level of hit and that level of direct hit. All right, now let's bring in Josh Rosenthal, who is live also uh, out here in Baltimore this evening as we're learning more information about the people who fell into the uh, fell into the water and more on that search and recovery operation. Josh. Yeah, and Jim, you said it. Ultimately, what we heard tonight not too long ago is the news that everyone hoped we could avoid, which is that what started as a search and rescue mission has now moved into a new phase. Uh, there's a ship approaching it just lost their steering. An early morning dispatch call halting traffic ahead of the Key Bridge in Baltimore only about one minute before this. 613 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody, the whole bridge just collapsed. The cargo ship losing power not long after leaving the port of Baltimore, ultimately striking the bridge above the Patapsco River at about 1.30 a.m. That's heartbreaking, waking up to that kind of news. Officials said a construction crew had been filling potholes along the bridge. Two people were pulled from the water almost immediately. The search continued for another six. Now, we let them lay in. Hear like, things that the, the families are like with authorities, like closer to uh, the site. At this point, we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. That solemn update coming Tuesday night with state and federal officials, including the president, saying they believe this to be a terrible accident and vowing to lead a thorough and lengthy response. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. Meanwhile, the impact of the collapse will be widespread, with ship traffic at least temporarily shut down at one of the country's major ports. There is no question that this will be a major and protracted impact to supply chains. Tonight, officials telling us that it's unclear when they'll be able to have that channel clear. And as for the search, they're hoping to have divers back in the water by 6 a.m. Jim. Yeah, and you know, speaking of that, because it was around 7.30, Josh, when they decided to call off the, uh, the search and rescue mission, and, and you can certainly attest to this, it's very cold at this hour. There was a big concern about putting divers back into the water and putting them at risk. It's cold, it's windy, the water temperature is cold, and don't forget, Jim, as we heard earlier from the Coast Guard, you have a lot of very heavy debris from the bridge that fell into the water uh, alongside these workers. All right, Josh Rosenthal for us. Josh, thank you. Uh, let's move on to one of the other major impacts of this. Obviously, when you take away this major span, Interstate 695, part of the Beltway, it is out of commission for months possibly more than that. Uh, the question is how you get around. This is going to be a new reality for so many people out there. And even if you don't commute through the Baltimore area, this could impact you as you make your travels through Maryland. Nala set your bones is on that angle of the story for us. She's standing by live now with those details. Nala? Uh, Jim, good evening. You said it. How do you get around? Because more than 30,000 cars and trucks use the Key Bridge daily. But after today's wreck that caused the bridge to collapse, a number of drivers tell me that their commutes will be much longer. But in that same breath, they say they're thankful they weren't on the bridge early this morning because a number of them cross that bridge daily. I was scared. I was like, they could have been me. I took them out the day before coming back from Booby. As the investigation and recovery for the six construction workers who were on the key bridge before it collapsed continues, some truck drivers are reconsidering their routes. Angela Besky hauls cars from Florida to New York. Now I need to think twice if I want to uh, get loads from uh, Baltimore or Washington area. But for some regional drivers like Deontay Rogers, they don't have a choice. I start from Maryland and go to Virginia, to Post Virginia, and I come back and go up to like, to Tom Pittsburgh and Jersey. Rideshare drivers in the area are concerned about business. It's going to be a while. That is a headache number one. But there are alternative routes. I-95, I-895 as alternatives. The Baltimore Harbor and Fort McHenry tunnels, but it makes travel time three times longer for some. Uh, maybe like 15, 30 minutes get there. That's about an hour, two hours. 
to get there. Everybody using the same route, so it's going to be a lot of traffic congestion trying to go back and forth. In a press briefing earlier, President Joe Biden pledged to rebuild this bridge that was opened in March of 1977. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. It's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. A number of truck drivers tell me this bridge closure could have an impact on consumer pockets. That truck room says people are more expensive than what it used to be. Due to have to use all the same routes, pull resources to get things to point A to point B. I hope they clear it out quick and uh, get the port rolling again and then hopefully start a plans for constructing a new bridge. Now, Jim, it's important to note that trucks that carry hazardous materials like gas, they actually cannot use those tunnels. So their alternate route is the western side of the 695. So they basically have to go around. And again, that could add anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, all depending on traffic. So we have a full list of those routes on our website at fox5dc.com. Jim. Nani, so you are uh, like me. We come in during the evening shift, and as we made our way out here to Baltimore,